When I look back at my time in the military, it's the night that you were the coldest that you remember, not the night that everything was perfect. The hunt that went wrong or floating down the river bow fishing when your motor gets jacked up and you got to drag the boat back to the landing. So I think being in conditions that some folks would say are, are miserable, really they're not. If it's not gonna kill you, it's not that miserable, you're gonna be fine. A lot of people are like, I can't believe you did that. Well, just do it. So when I joined the military, I didn't really know what I was getting into. Got to jump out of planes. I was a, a 31 Victor tactical communications when I first came in the military. So I was the radio guy that ran around with a, either a captain or a colonel. And then from there, you know, I'm looking around, and I'm like, wow, these Green Beret guys walking around. And my wife said, well, you can do that. You can, you know, you can do it. I was like, man, I don't know. So I went through special forces assessment and selection. I was selected to attend the qualification course. I went there and became a Special Forces Communications Sergeant, and then I went to Arabic Language School. While I was in Arabic Language School, Desert Shield kicked off. I went to Desert Shield, Desert Storm for six months. When I came back from that, I decided that I would try to do something else to try to go to the next level. So at that point, I tried out for a Special Mission Unit. I went to their selection, and in the fall of 1991, I uh, ended up going to that special mission unit and I stayed there pretty much all those years until I retired. I was a assaulter, a sniper, sniper team leader, assault team leader, primary shooting instructor for the unit for a couple years. And then I ended up being a, uh, a troop sergeant major, did five, five tours to Iraq for the current war. Before that, I actually went to Somalia for the whole Black Hawk Down deal. I was a member of C Squadron, went over there and, and did a few months in Mogadishu, Somalia, and got to partake of the festivities of the 3rd and the 4th of October back in 1993, which is kind of a, a high and a low point in my career, I would say. Up until that point, I really hadn't had any of the guys that I served with get killed. And then in Somalia, we lost 18 guys in our task force. It made me a different person because I got really, really serious about the tactical and the firearms training because I could look back at what happened to me there and I could pick out defining points where I could have done better. That's my flag that I wore in uh, Somalia 25 years ago. And uh, every day since that day I've carried this flag. I decided that on the 3rd of October, I'm probably gonna stop carrying that because it's about worn out and it'll probably go on a plaque or something or I don't know what I'll do with it, but maybe my grandkids will think that that's an interesting story at some point. I carry that flag because, to, just to remember. And it's,
we we got to remember what we're what we're doing here, you know, and and I think that's something that, you know, it's not just the military, but ultimately everybody in this room is an American, and that's something that we all can relate to.